Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about filtering with the Continuous Time Fourier series. This is the real payoff for the Fourier series story. We've been building it up from the idea of an eigenfunction, where if my input to an LTI system is a complex exponential, my output is a scaled version of that exponential. And then we went, made the next step using the Fourier series to show, in fact, pretty much any periodic signal we're interested in can be written as a weighted sum of those complex exponentials or eigenfunctions. And so that sets us up to write our input periodic waveform in terms of a, a recipe or, or synthesis of these exponentials, each one of which is very easy to find the output for that one term. And then after we've put each one of the, the, the exponentials through the filter one at a time, we add them back together with the Fourier synthesis equation uh, to get our answer uh, for the output. And in doing that, on one hand, it seems like a lot of work because it's three steps, but it's three straightforward steps to hopefully avoid what's often a pretty gnarly integral for a convolution. So let's uh, switch over to the whiteboard, and I'm going to, again, review that roadmap because it's so important to this class, uh, and then do an example showing you a, an example of filtering a square wave with a low-pass filter in continuous time using the Fourier series approach. So again, so far we've seen when we have a linear time invariant system with an impulse response h of t, for an input x of t, the way we would find the output y of t is using the convolution integral. So in the time domain perspective of the class, that's what we do. But we've built, we now have all the pieces in place to show the other way around this. This is sort of sometimes like taking three steps, like I said in the intro. So the first step is to find the Fourier series for x of t, which is to take Fourier, analyze x of t, that's why we call it the analysis equation, to write x of t as a weighted sum of complex exponentials. Right, so we saw last week that this is our analysis equation. We can use this for any periodic x of t, where we know capital T is the period. And, the, and then finding these a sub k is what we found as the recipe to rewrite x of t sort of equivalently. Right, these, This is an equivalent representation of x of t in terms of uh, each harmonic frequency. Right, So that conversion from x of t to the a sub k's is the first important step that we've solved. The a sub k's are this recipe. And then we're going to put it through an LTI system, through the same LTI system. When we want to run this through the LTI system, we're using the eigenfunction property, right, which says for each term in the sum, the output is going to be the frequency response at that harmonic. Oops, that should be omega naught. So for each term in that sum, I get the same complex exponential coming out again because of the eigenfunction property, but and the same gain on the a sub k going in, but then that exponential has been scaled by h of j k omega naught, where this is the frequency response for this the eigenfunction for this choice of s. Right? We said the general eigenfunction property is we put in e to the st, we get out h of s as uh, times e to the st, and so this here is the s we've chosen. And the product of these, well, I guess then, then once we've done this for each exponential, linearity tells me we can add them all up to get the output. Right, so the y of t is now the sum of these new uh, exponentials, the same exponentials, each one of which has had the gain applied to it based on the frequency response evaluated at the harmonic frequency, omega naught. And again, to remind you, we saw in class, this h of s is a function of h of t. So we can write out h of s as the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity h of, two, e, h of t e to the minus st dt. So if I have the impulse response that I started with up here, I can find the frequency response, this gain for the eigenfunctions down here. And if I look at this the right way, this sum then for the output, we could say, well, all these things are just the coefficients weighting these exponentials in the output. So these, these, this h times ak is really the output Fourier series b of k. I think of it that way. My second step is that by applying the filter, I get a different gain at each frequency. Each k is at frequency k times omega naught, where omega naught is that fundamental frequency based on the period. And so now, once I have it in this form, I've really, the last step would actually be, given the b of k's, I would be evaluating this sum to get back to the time domain. So I'm not sure that I've, I've drawn it the best way here, but it is what it is. 
right? So the sort of third step is always evaluating this sum gets me back to the time dim. And so this would be the CT Fourier series synthesis, right, where we're, we're saying that y of t is the sum of the BT, BK e to the JK omega naught t. So the big payoff in this new roadmap is that while it looks like a complicated process, I've avoided this convolution and that this filtering has, I've gone from convolving in time to just multiplying in frequency, right? That I can quickly find the B sub k's in terms of the A sub k's and the frequency response h. And often, rather than having to integrate an impulse response, a lot of filters are designed or specified in the frequency domain. But so my multiplication process here just says that B of k is the input, the output Fourier series coefficients B of k are the input ones, which are the A sub k's evaluated are multiplied by the frequency response h evaluated at the multiples of the fundamental frequency omega naught. So I go off and look at that graphically in the example I'm going to show you and read that off. So if we sort of pull this all together into three steps, let me scoot up the page a little bit. So our, our three steps for, for solving for continuous time Fourier series filtering. The first one is to find uh, use the Fourier series analysis equation to find the uh, A sub k's. Right, and this is the, the process of getting from time to frequency representation. The A sub k's are essentially the, represent the, the recipe in the frequency domain. Uh, we practiced that a lot last week with that integral. Okay, so that's the first step, sort of up here, up here on our roadmap. That's getting from here to here. So maybe I'll, I'll put a blue one here. So right, that's step one. Step two is right here, this equation, doing the filtering by multiplying in frequency. Right, so we're multiplying those coefficients, a sub k, with the frequency response h of j k omega naught, same k in both, to get the output co continuous time Fourier series coefficients b sub k, which is, if we put that just in equation form, Right, the b sub k is a sub k times h, or a sub k times h of j k omega naught. So that's the second step from our roadmap up here. And the third step is the synthesis step, that we're going back, now that we have the b sub k's, we put them into this sum, and, we've, and we're adding them up to get back to our equation in the time domain y sub t. So let's pull that down here. So we get the output y of t by adding the synthesis equation, right? So those b sub k's we just found are the recipe, we like to say, the coefficients for making the output y of t. And so we plug them into this equation and add them up. Each, each, multiple, you know, take each b sub k, multiply it by a corresponding complex exponential, and then add these and simplify, often using Euler's relationships uh, to get the output y of t. All right, so... That lays out the overall roadmap, the three steps for getting through filtering. Find the AKs, multiply them with H to get the BKs, and then add the, take those BKs and use them to scale exponentials to get back to the output signal. A lot of steps, but again, as I've said several times, the key idea here is it's very easy to do this multiply in frequency to find the output, often much easier than finding the equivalent convolution. So I'm going to stop this video here uh, and break up the, the, the description and move on to my example in the next video, an example of actually applying this process. Okay, so that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.